Only on KOLD News 13 tonight, we are getting a look at explosive new video of a controversial arrest involving a Pima County Sheriff's deputy and a 15-year-old who has no legs or arms. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Maris. And I'm Brooke Wagner. This video shows the deputy wrestling the teen to the floor. We do want to warn you the video you're about to see could be disturbing to watch. KOLD News 13's Bud Foster joining us live at the Sheriff's Office along Vincent Highway with more. Bud. Well, Dan, I showed that video to the Pima County Sheriff's Department just a little while ago. They had not seen the video before, and once they watched it, they did begin an internal investigation. Now, this incident happened a couple of months ago, but that video is just now coming to light. We were able to get our hands on it today, and as you said, it's going to be rather explosive. And then they have an exchange, and he gets in his face. And he curses at him. You consider that egregious? Yes, absolutely. Imagine you're this boy with no limbs who just got tackled by this large man with a badge and gun, and this man is now screaming in your face, and he's now threatening your friend who has the temerity to record this whole incident. Absolutely, that's egregious. The eight-minute video begins with a deputy on top of the 15-year-old boy, wrestling him to the floor with shouting and swearing. Later, it also shows that same deputy arrests the 16-year-old boy who shot most of the video. He's eating the bowl of cereal. He puts the bowl of cereal down. He puts his hand behind his back. And now the deputy is going to slam his head into the wall. And he's completely restrained at this point and is not trying to resist arrest. It doesn't look like he's doing anything. Just for good measure, let's slam his head into the wall. We watched the video with the public defender, Joel Feynman, and with his chief assistant, Megan Page, in their office. I would be horrified if an officer treated my children this way, and these kids are already in the traumatic situation of being in DCS custody and they're not even in a stable home environment. So I think it's absolutely horrific. We showed the video to the Pima County Sheriff's Department Internal Affairs late this afternoon, which would not allow us to tape that. It was the first time the department had seen the video. It was not aware that it even existed. And as would be expected, they were noncommittal. It's difficult to really predict, but obviously there are, there are a number of, of outcomes that could, that could occur. Um, following an internal affairs investigation. Meantime, the public defender's office says it's rare that videos such as this make daylight. Usually they get buried, so when one does see sunshine, it's a rare teaching moment. Men with badges and guns should not be acting this way, and that men and women who do act this way should not have badges and guns. Now, those two teenagers were arrested. They were taken to juvenile jail and booked for disorderly conduct. That case right now is being prosecuted by the Pima County Attorney's Office. Now, I'm going to talk to one of those young boys tomorrow. They're in school, so we have to sort of work around that. And the Pima County Sheriff's Office told us late this afternoon that that internal investigation would probably take a couple of weeks. Dan, Brooke? And, Bud, you mentioned that you could not film us watching their reaction there with the sheriff's department as they watch that video for the first time but you were in the room correct well, yes, and, and these men are professionals, and they're very stoic. They didn't show any emotion, but I tell you what, they watched every moment of that video. They watched it very intently, and then after it was over, they asked us for a copy for their internal investigation. And also, Bud, who's advocating for this teen? He lives in a group home. Do you have any idea who's going to be helping him through this process as it just gets started? Well, yeah, you're right. He is in a group home. I was told today that he has been abandoned by his family. He does have a lawyer. I talked to the lawyer this afternoon, and he said there's likely to be some civil action, some civil litigation somewhere down the road. All right. Thank you, bud. And we will stay on top of the story and bring you any new details as soon as we get them.